Today is the day we finally talk about my new guitar. Okay, so uh, we discussed this a little bit when I actually unboxed it a couple of months ago. I've just not gotten around to making the video. I've not, I've just been busy. We've been building a bunch of other stuff. We've been making a lot of pickups. We've been doing other stuff. And I haven't gotten around to reviewing probably my favorite guitar in the whole wide world ever. So uh, let's talk about what this thing is. Um, well, actually, a little backstory. Even though I do all this Dylan Talks Tone stuff, and it's usually about electric guitars, um, I'm no Tony Policastro, if you know who he is, um, I love acoustic music, and I love acoustic guitars, and if I had one guitar to live with me on an island forever, it would be an acoustic guitar. I would not have an electric and an amp or anything like that, even if I had the choice. It would be an acoustic guitar. Um, it's my favorite thing to play, it's my favorite thing to riff on and write on and collaborate with other people and then I'll move it to electric um, and any band I've ever played in anything that I've ever contributed has always been done on acoustic guitar first and then to electric it's just it's just my thing man I just I love it I played breed love before uh, it was awesome my breed love premiere rosewood was a D8, D18, D28 killer. It was freaking amazing. And for those of you that know me and are close enough physically to uh, have played that guitar, you know it was really a good one. Um, that one now lives in Florida. I sold that. I sold my Kemper. I got rid of a bunch of stuff in order to pay for one of these. Um, this is a McPherson. Well, here, let me get it up. This is my McPherson Sable carbon fiber acoustic guitar. A couple of reasons why I bought it. One is, as you may or may not know, uh, I do not care to argue Tonewood junk. I think it's a pointless argument. Um, does it make a difference sometimes? Oh, obviously on an acoustic guitar it does. Um, but kind of as a, I'm just gonna do my own thing, I was like, I'm gonna get rid of all wood. I'm just gonna have an acoustic guitar with no wood in it. There. Boom. Done. The other reason is because we live in a motorhome full-time and um, it just made sense. Uh, when we went on our West Coast run this summer and went all the way out to the West Coast and did a bunch of touring around for you know seven months or whatever, I didn't even bring my breed love because I didn't want to expose it to the elements and the changes in the weather and all that kind of stuff. I just didn't want to do it, which was super kind of bummed me out to not have it with me. You know what I mean? So uh, that was the other reason why. Um, and then when I called uh, McPherson to ask them about being in a video or doing some content with them or uh, so we could talk about the technology in the guitar, which we'll get to in a minute. And I told him, I was like, I, I really want to buy one. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in the market and I want to buy one. I hadn't sold my guitar or my Kemper yet. Uh, and he said, you know, what do you want? And I said, I want the honeycomb top with the satin hardware, not gold hardware, and I want Evo frets. And he says, that guitar is sitting right here. I have it right in front of me. Uh, and we have the new case that just came out. Do you want to try it? And I said, yes. And um, I was on the phone like this, and I was like, Leslie, he has the guitar right there, the one that I want. And she said, tell me when to transfer the money and I'll make it happen. And so we did, boom, right then. A few days later, it shows up um, and it's perfect. It's absolutely an unbelievable guitar. Okay, so let's get into the specifics of what this thing is. So McPherson's engineering is quite different than other acoustic guitar uh, instruments. Obviously, this one's really different because it's there's no wood in it. But let's get to some McPherson specific things. First obvious crazy thing, uh, besides the carbon fiber, is that the sound hole is in the wrong spot. Now what Matt McPherson says, and it makes a lot of sense, is if the soundboard of the guitar uh, goes from here to here, then why would you put the sound hole in the middle where it vibrates the most and force the vibrations to the edges of the soundboard where it doesn't vibrate as much? 
he says, can we have a, a continuous soundboard that goes from one end of the body all the way to the other without interruption, put the sound hole somewhere else. Okay, makes sense. There's probably more that goes into it than that, but that's what I hear when he explains it. Makes sense to me. Okay, very cool. Weird, but cool. Uh, the other thing is that there is this cantilevered neck. So most acoustic guitars have uh, the fretboard glued onto the neck, uh, but it's glued onto the neck, and then when they set the neck into the guitar, they actually glue the fretboard to the top of the guitar. Um, it's common. It's what everybody's done for hundreds of years, probably. But what he's done is he's done it more like a violin, where it's a floating cantilevered tail. And his theory for that is that you attach the neck here, but you don't impede the vibration of the top by gluing the tail to the top and effectively shortening the amount of soundboard that can vibrate. So you get this much more soundboard that can vibrate. And when you play it, um, you can feel it. You can definitely tell. You can definitely tell. It, it, it's, it does make a big difference. A couple other things about this. There is no truss rod in this guitar. And people have gotten in the comments and said, that's a deal breaker for me. Well, again, when we go back to the other videos about what a truss rod is supposed to do, it is there specifically to do, counteract the tension of the strings that you put on the guitar. The strings are pulling this way, so the truss rod needs to pull the opposite way, and it establishes your playing surface, and that surface should be consistent, no matter the weather, no matter the string tension. But in a wooden guitar, many times, it is not 100% stable, and so when you change your string tension or you change the humidity, you need to compensate for it by adjusting the truss rod. By removing all wood from the guitar, now you don't have to ever compensate for humidity or weather. This guitar, whether it's 30 below zero or 100 degrees, is going to play exactly the same. Whether the humidity is 20% or 90%, it's gonna play exactly the same because nothing's gonna expand and contract to the extent that wood would. Wood would. Wood squared? Anyway. Now, what about string tension changes? What about going from 12s, these are 13s, it comes with 13s on it, uh, 13s to 12s to 11s, whatever. Uh, the bottom line is, if this is stiff enough, it doesn't matter it doesn't move. To illustrate this, if I were to slack all the strings uh, right now and then tune the low E up, okay? So let's say we slack all the strings, we tune the low E up to pitch, okay? And all these other strings will be slack. Now on a normal guitar, if you, as you bring all the rest of the strings up to tension, the guitar will bend a little bit and this string would go flat as the guitar bends a little bit with the tension of all the strings. This guitar doesn't do that. It's totally stiff and totally stable the entire time. As a result, you can, as long as you are careful taking it in and out of the case and don't bump the tuning keys. Oh, I guess my, my D is, my E is down. You can take it out of the case after a week and it'll still be 100% in tune. It is absolutely unbelievable tuning stability wise. Put all these features together uh, with an LR bags system in here. Um, really, really nice Shaler tuners. And you have a fantastic, fantastic guitar. Uh, you wanna hear what it sounds like? I bet you do.
It sounds amazing. And I know there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna say, uh, yeah, but it's not wood, whatever, and have all kinds of preconceived ideas about what this thing should or shouldn't be. But the bottom line is it's like nothing else. You can't compare it to anything else. And um, until you play one yourself, if you're skeptical about it, uh, you gotta play one. It's so good, um, so good. Incidentally, one of the weird things that's happening while we're standing here talking to you in the sun is that the top of the guitar is like physically hot because it's black and it's carbon fiber and we're in the sun. <laughs> um, and that is probably one of the weird things that is present when you play this guitar uh, that is not really with anything else um, except for maybe something with an aluminum neck maybe. Uh, but if the guitar is physically cold, uh, the neck is physically cold so wood obviously it, it moves to temperature a lot more slowly I think um, I mean obviously it's warm now because I've been playing it and it's sitting in the Sun but if you like left it in your car overnight which you can it won't hurt anything it'll be cold and that's a weird feeling one of the other interesting things that I find with this guitar is um, the the vibration is unbelievable it wants to jump off of your lap I know that you would Tonewood people don't believe me, but when you play this, you'll you'll go, wow, it, it like surprises you how much motion there is in this box. It's unbelievable. The thing is, is that it's so isolated to this box that you feel, you still feel it in your left hand or in your fretting hand, but it's less. It's an interesting thing where all the vibration, the, all the sound, which is where it should be, comes out here and there isn't a lot of lost energy down here in the peg head or in the neck it, it literally is all right here and it just projects out of the guitar it's so cool um, I have not been this excited about a guitar probably ever um, this is my favorite guitar I've ever had um, I, it's uh, it's unbelievable absolutely unbelievable uh, I guess it's time to give it a D score uh, let's give it a D score so Ease of use, we're gonna give it a three because we give all guitars a three uh, because it's a guitar and it's either more easy to use or less easy to use. It's just, it's a guitar. Pin bridge, same thing as ever. Features, uh, we're gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a five out of five for the first time ever on features because of the engineering, the unbelievable engineering that goes into this guitar to make it happen. Um, there's more that I have not even told you about, but uh, Evo frets, all the all the technology that goes into the bridge, um, the bracing inside, everything that goes into this thing, technology-wise, features-wise, is super cool, and there's no other guitar like it. Even some of the other carbon fiber guitars that are out there are not like this. Value for money, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Um, you can't give it a five out of five because it's a little pricey, for the average player to afford. Um, I believe MSRP on this model is $3,500. Um, that puts it in Martin territory. Um, it could compete all day long with, with any comparable Martin or Breedlove or Gibson in that price range. I, I have no problem saying that, but it still is out of the realm for some people. And so I'm gonna give it a four out of five. That being said, their wooden guitars, McPherson's wooden guitars, are approximately, you know, eight to ten thousand dollars to start. So, um, in that respect, it's a good value. Uh, I think it's a great value for my needs, so I love it. Build quality, absolutely hundred percent five out of five. McPherson is top shelf. McPherson, they should be. I mean, their wooden guitars are ten grand. Frets are perfect. Finish was perfect. Setup is perfect. 
intonation is perfect. They use the BuzzFeed system uh, and they send you a medium and a low saddle. You've seen the video on that if you watch our channel, the swap out and the difference in tone. This is still the low saddle. I left it in. I like it. Um, on their wooden guitars, they do not tolerate any imperfections. They do not tolerate glue. They do not tolerate water spots. They do not tolerate anything, even on the inside of the guitar where you'll never see it. They do not tolerate imperfection. And so five out of five, 100%. And that is true with this guitar. I did not find one thing that I did not like about it, or I did not feel was up to par. This guitar was 100% perfect right out of the box. Uh, D Factor, I'm gonna have to give it a five. Um, I mean, how cool is this? It's the coolest thing ever. And I know that the wood people are gonna say it's not, but the bottom line is the future is happening right now. Oh, it's five and a half pounds, by the way. It's really light. Um, the future is now. It's happening right now. And I love this guitar and I play it every day. I've actually already gone through like four sets of strings. I've been playing it a ton. Uh, I did, we did a whole feature video on choosing what strings I'm gonna use. I'll leave a link to that so you can see, because this guitar does like a little bit different characteristics string wise. And the only other thing I could say, uh, maybe one negative, let's just give it one little negative thing, is the smell. So it's hot, you know, cause it's in the sun and you can smell the fact that it's not wood. Um, I actually mentioned this to McPherson. I was like, if you could figure out how to make it not necessarily smell like wood, but make it not smell not like wood. Like, don't let it smell man-made, if that makes sense. Figure out a way to make it smell more natural and not man-made. That would be my only tiny little criticism for it. But I don't care, um, because you know everybody sniffs their guitar. Everybody smells their gear. So anyway, there you go. So that gives us a total D score of 22, which I think might be the highest one we've ever had as a result of the extreme quality and the extreme cool factor of this particular guitar. Uh, make sure you check out our vlogs on Friday. Make sure you check out our live videos on Thursday. Uh, live videos on Thursday at five, vlogs, and also uh, our technical how-to videos and reviews and stuff on Tuesdays. Um, and if you want to see stuff faster, because I shot this probably a couple weeks ago and put it up on Patreon like a week ago. So if you wanna see this stuff early, you can see it on Patreon. You can ask questions about it and help us kind of formulate the next video coming up as well as uh, join button down here, right down there somewhere, uh, does the same thing. So you'll see it a week early. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, if you have any questions, put it in the comments and we'll see you soon.